السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, this is a morning benefit from our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The benefits of Al-Asl, Asl Umat, honey water, fresh cold water, a tablespoon of honey, and Quran. It works wonders for the body. Allahu Jalla wa Ala, he says in his book, Aridu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة عن الشكر لله ومن يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقُمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَوَقَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ وفصاله في عامين يعني اشكر لي ولوالديك وإلي المصير وإن جاهداك لتشرك جاهداك على أن تشرك بما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفا واتبع سبيل من أناب إلي ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا بني إنها إن تكم إثقال حبة من خرتل فتكون في صخرة فتكون في صخرة أو في السماوات أو في الأرض يأتي بها الله إن الله لطيف خبير يا بني يعقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمش في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فسور واقصد في واشقصد في مشك واغضض من صوتك إن أنكر الأصوات لصوت الحمير ابن قيم الجوزية he mentioned in his famous book known as Tibb Tibb al-Nabi the medicine of our beloved Prophet and that he mentioned how the benefits of drinking honey water 
And one of the best drinks that the Prophet would drink was honey water. And it would normally be cold and sweet. You can add different things to it and have many benefits. However, there's also mentioned how the honey water has a benefit on your health and how also the Quran has a benefit on your soul. So it's a beauty to mention or we'll couple them both together, which is honey water as well as the Quran. The verses that we were reciting from is Surah Luqman, the 31st Surah of the Quran. Well, Allah Jalla wa'ala, he says, And indeed, we have given to Luqman al-Hikmah. We have given Luqman al-Hikmah, meaning we have given Luqman the ability to place everything in its proper place. We have granted him wisdom to place everything in his rightful place. And we told him to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he whosoever is grateful to Allah, then فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ nafsi, Then that gratefulness or that gratitude is only a benefit for his or herself. And that whoever disbelieves and is ungrateful and ungrateful to Allah Azza wa Jal, and is an ingrate or disbeliever, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani. He is free from all wants and he is rich and he is free from all needs and he's al-hamid, the one who's deserving of being praised exclusively. He said, remember when Luqman said to his son, O oh my son, la tushrik billah, do not commit partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For in the shurka, he said, do not commit partners, ya abu nayya la tushrik billah. Huh? Do not commit partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the shurka la dhulmun azim, because he said indeed committing shurk is a tremendous or great oppression, wrongdoing. And remember we have enjoined upon man to be dutiful to his parents, that his mother has bored him upon weakness, weakness after weakness, and after that hardship, and his weaning from his mother's breast was for two years. So be grateful to me, Allah says, be grateful unto me and to your parents, and unto me will be your return. And if they both strive, but one of them strive to make you commit partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you have no knowledge of, then do, do not obey them. In that, but accompany them in this life in goodness. And follow the way of he who turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon repentance. Then unto me will be your return. And I shall inform you that which you used to do. Then Allah lays down these following verses, which are tremendous pures. And this is not the talk to go into the story of Luqman as far as extracting the benefits that the ulama extracted. But this is just honey and Qur'an as a benefit for us this morning to reflect over the Qur'an, inshaAllah. He says, Ya Abu Nayya, O my son. So that you know, Ya Abu Nayya is different from saying Ya Walad. This Abu Nayya here is more endearing. It's got more love to it. Oh my precious, O oh my dear son. My son who is dear to my heart. It be if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain of a mustard seed, okay? And though it be in a rock or in the heavens or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Rally Allah is subtle in bringing out that his grain and he's well aware of all that we do. He's well aware of its place. He said, Oh my son, perform the prayer. Aqim as salat perform as salat and enjoin goodness upon people, wa bil ma'ruf, and to prohibit them from evil, al munkab, was bi alama asab, and be patient upon anything that harms you. I just want to take a little brief moment here for us to reflect. Many of you might be aware of Surah Asa, and you might be aware of the fundamental book which is known as the Latha to Rasul, the three fundamental principles based off the three questions you be asked in the grave. And you might be aware how the Sheikh used sort of also to be the proof for the four things that is obligatory for us to know. And that is Ilm Allah, 
ilm rasuli wa dini having knowledge of Allah his messenger and the deen of Al-Islam wal amalu bi acting according to it the da'wah to the name of Allah I want you to listen to that same format, which is found in Surah Al-Asr, that Allah says, in the ladina amin, rally those who believe, that is, having ilm of Allah and His Messenger, the deen of Islam, wa amal al that is, acting according to it, no one writes his deeds, wa tawasab al haq and enjoining one another to the truth, that is, da'wah to ilay, that's calling to it, wa tawasab al sabr and enjoining one another to have patience, that is, wa sabr ala adhafi, right? All that's connected. Well, pay attention to this particular advice to look man to his son and see how all of this is connected. He said, Ya Bunaya Akima Salah. Ya Bunaya Akima Salah. Oh my son, establish the prayer. Establishing the prayer is the benefit of the servant. But establishing the prayer is an integral part of a silla baina abd wa rub. Between the connection between the servant and his Lord. And it pertains to having Iman in this Lord, belief in this Lord, you follow me? Also, it's an action, because prayer is also from those things which is known as Amal al-Salih, righteous actions. But Allah says, What bil ma'rufi al munkar Command the good and prohibit the evil. Command the good and prohibit the evil. If you do not know, commanding the good and forbidding the evil is from a form of da'wah. It is a form of da'wah. So you can see the correlation here. A da'wah to ilay. It is a form of da'wah. Establish the prayer. Okay? Establish the prayer. Do righteous actions. Believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. And then command the good, forbid the evil. So a person who practices Islam, a person who prays to the Creator, their very part of their makeup is that they do wa'amura bil ma'ruf, They command the good and they prohibit the evil. Right? But then Allah says, Wasbir ala ma asabi. My favorite verse throughout the entire Quran. The favorite, you hear this point here. He's telling his son to begin with righteous actions, which is based off his iman or his creed. Right? Then to command the good and prohibit the evil, which is a call to do. And then to be patient. Wasbir ala ma asabi. Then to be patient upon whatever befall you. You understand that? In other words, this part of the verse is even similar to what we said, Wasbir ala asabra ala adafi, having patience upon any harm that you're going to encounter upon the way. This part of the verse sets you up. It's setting the sun up. It's setting anyone up who hears it that you're going to undergo hardships. You're going to undergo adversity. You're going to undergo difficulties. You're going to undergo things that will not be in agreement with your soul, that might not be satisfi satisfactory, that might not bring about all of that which you desire and love. You're going to undergo it. Allah said, be patient upon, this is what Luke man is telling the son, be patient upon whatever befall you. Here the man here is used, meaning whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whether it's a prick from a thorn, whether it's something small or minute that you felt hurt your hand, or whether it's something big, you lost your loved one, you lost a spouse, you lost a child, it doesn't matter. Then Allah tells you that this feature, this patience, which is a requirement, even in da'wah, commanding the good, forbidding the evil, takes patience. Performance a lot takes patience. Believing in Allah as a wajal takes patience. So even after all of that, Allah said, "Inna dalika min azmil umur." Allah said, "Rally indeed, inna dalika min azmil umur." He said that these are some of the important commandments ordered by Allah with no exemption, because these things might be difficult. Wa ma sabru ka illa bi sabr Allah that you cannot have patience except Allah Jalla wa Ala grant you patience. So we wanted to bring that as a morning benefit, honey. In Quran, and hopefully you can benefit from these verses. It's Surah Luqman, verses uh, Surah 31, verse uh, 12 to verse 19.
verse 12 to verse 19. Reflect on some of those benefits. You fathers, pay attention to the very important thing that you should do for your children. And that is to establish the Tawheed. Because Luqman start off by saying, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah. So he established the Tawheed with Allah Azza wa Jal and he prohibited him. His first prohibition to his child was to not commit shirk with his maker. This is important for fathers, okay? Very important for fathers and even mothers as well. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala, after mentioning this tidbit piece, Allah goes in to show you that the children must have obedience towards the parents. So Allah said, well, Sayyidina insana, look what Allah goes into next. And we enjoined upon man to be dutiful to his parents. Why would Allah mention that next? He mentioned that next to show you that the parent's right is father, is father, and he group it for kids. So this advice that the son and the father is given to the son, the son should pay attention to and take heed to because his creator has enjoined him to be dutiful to his parents. And a part of him being due to his parents is listen to the advice. Tayyip. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala tells you also that what you look out for from your parents, that you must make sure that if anything comes from your parents that is not you have no knowledge of, that goes against the very fundamental commandment, and that is uh, worshiping other than Allah, if they command you with that, do not obey them. Allah said, do not obey them. You have to still be kind to them. You still have to treat them with right. Right, right, compassion, etc., etc., but you do not have to obey them in that. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned something from Luqman to his son, which I think that we should depart with any one of our children. And that is the fact that there is nothing. There is nothing. I mean, uh, there is nothing that exists in this earth, on the face of this earth, in the heavens, anywhere. Those places we know of, those places we do not know, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it and he will bring it forth. This is rari, this is cultivation. When you instill this into a child and when you instill this into yourself, you know for sure that your creator is the one who has total control, that he has power, that he has real power. Not superhero, but he has real power. Power not mixed up with this or mixed up with that, but real power. He's in total control. Total control. Are you? This is very important, mashallah. When you instill this into your children, don't be afraid to instill this into your children. Allah is showing you what you can place inside your children. Instill the understanding that the maker is the one in control, no matter if there are tornadoes, no matter if there are earthquakes, no matter if there are murders in abundance, no matter if there are um, oppressive rulers, no matter if there are criminals, no matter if this going on in the world, that going on in the world, this person get raped, this person get hurt, that... The Creator is in total control. Ya Bunayya, in taku mithqala habbatan min qardalin. If you do any act that is equal to a, 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 a weight of an atom of a mustard seed or a grain of a mustard seed, Allah Jalla wa'ala, if it be in the earth or even in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring it forth. It's not hitting. Then Allah, then the Prophet, then, I mean, Luqman alayhi salatu salam tells his son, establish the prayer. Which means the very next thing after commanding your children with the belief in the law and the prohibition of committing shirk, the very next thing that should be on the top of your list. You keep saying, well, I don't know how to raise my kids. You know how to raise your kids. Pay attention. Now, you know how to raise your kids. You have to pay attention. Raising your children is fundamental. The second thing you need to do is aqim salah Establish the prayer. And inshallah ta'ala hopefully you get a benefit from that. I was able to benefit. Uh, I tried to get a small little benefit. I wasn't meaning to even go into the actual verses. But uh, inshallah ta'ala go back. You can rewind this tape. Anything I said that was incorrect is for myself. And shaitan Allah was correct. Shumallahu jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala 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 wa